Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead week four of pantry challenge. You will not believe this, but it is Tuesday. Typically I start my pantry challenge on Sunday and we do a couple preps. We get my husband's breakfast. We kind of prep a few dinners, but we had so many leftovers last week. I made a little bit too much food. And on Sunday night, we went to my father-in-law's house for dinner and he sent us home with some leftover pizza. So between what I made and that, we just haven't had to really, I haven't had to cook anything. And it's now time to cook something and I'm gonna do a little bit of prep. I took out of the freezer a freezer meal. This is the shells. We made this in the last freezer video. And I did this for a reason because tomorrow I'm prepping for Valentine's Day. I'm gonna make a bunch of candies and cookies. And I know that I'm not gonna to wanna to have to cook after that. So I thought I'd get that out and thawing. We're gonna make my husband a baked oatmeal. I had an open jar of peaches in the refrigerator and these are some homegrown blueberries we're gonna put in it. You've seen me do that before. And then over here in the Instapot, I have some stew meat. Last week I thawed out some liver and I on accident thawed out some stew beef as well. So that has to be cooked up today. I'm gonna to make a Korean style, or I shouldn't say that. I'm gonna completely ma make this up. So I'm gonna make an Asian style braised beef in the Instapot. I've never done this before, but I got a bunch of stuff out of my refrigerator that we're gonna clean the refrigerator out and we're gonna make some sort of sauce for it. And then I cooked up some white rice. So that is what we're gonna do for dinner tonight. This week is gonna be the week of the potato. I have some potatoes that are homegrown in the pantry that are gonna crawl out of our box because their eyes are so big. So I have a ton of plans for potatoes. I don't know exactly all the things we're gonna do. Let's get this braised beef going because it is already 6.30 and we need this cooking. Hopefully my husband got the gasket fixed so the Instapot is gonna be working this week. It's gonna be hard to see, but you see how it's browning right here? That's what we want. I'm gonna start adding some of the other ingredients. I have half a jar here of some homemade Asian plum sauce I made. We're gonna be making this probably this week or next week because I need to can up some more. And I have plums in the freezer. I'm gonna add a little soy sauce. I have just a little bit of this Portland Worcestershire. This was not my favorite, so I'm just gonna dump it in and we're gonna use it up. We have a little bit of coconut aminos. We just have a little bit left, so we're just gonna use the rest of the bottle. And then we'll add some sesame oil. I'm using the soy sauce to deglaze the bottom of the Instapot. I've never done anything where I've sauteed in the Instapot like this before. The one thing that's interesting is there is definitely like a bump in the middle of the Instapot that makes it a little bit difficult to saute in. Now we're gonna add the rest of this bottle of coconut aminos because there's not that much. All the things we added have a ton of flavor in them. So I'm adding one cup of water so we can have more of a sauce. Hopefully this works because I don't have a plan B for dinner. How long do you think we should cook it for? Let's say half an hour. I have no idea. So we have to turn that off because it's still on saute mode. I think, how do you do that? So we want manual. Let's try, let's try 30 minutes. For While the beef is in the Instapot cooking, I'm gonna to throw together Josh's oatmeal. He said this was probably one of his best oatmeals I've ever made for him, so I'll make this combination again for sure. The peach blueberry was a hit. You've seen me make this multiple times. I can link the recipe down in the description box, but I tend to, since I make it so much, just do it by sight. And there it is, going in the oven. Then Josh has breakfast for the whole week. I think we're good. The button's up and there's not a bunch of steam coming out and the timer has started. So I think we're gonna have this for dinner tonight, which is great. Let's get the veggies prepped to roast. I just am going to dice up this cabbage and put it on a baking sheet with some parchment paper. I always put parchment paper on my baking sheets just because it makes cleanup a lot easier. I'm not a huge fan of scrubbing baking sheets. These are some homegrown carrots. I cut the tops and bottoms off. I gave them a really good scrub. I'm not gonna peel them because they're homegrown and I'm not worried about it and they would be a pain to peel because they are so little. I'm cutting them at a diagonal. For some reason, I just prefer this shape. I enjoy, it. I don't know, it doesn't change the flavor, but the texture, I really prefer it to be at a diagonal. And now we have our veggies on our trays. We're gonna put a little bit of olive oil and garlic, salt, and pepper on them. We're gonna give them a toss and we're gonna throw these in a 425 degree oven 
for about 20 minutes. And I don't want to forget, this is Korean red pepper flakes. I talk about this all the time. It's a game changer with roasted vegetables. I'll link it down below. Let me know if you guys have tried these Korean red pepper flakes. They are phenomenal. And into the oven, they go. I think the purple and orange is so pretty together. So while I've been waiting for dinner, I peeled an orange because it's now 7.40. But our meat is done and I want to take a look, or a taste I should say. I already checked it for tenderness and it's plenty tender. It smells really good. Very tender, did you see how that just broke with the fork? Mm. Good. Now that is the thing of beauty. Roasted vegetables are the best. I'm gonna plate up some food for Josh. So I have some rice in the bottom of this bowl. And we'll put some carrots and cabbage on each side. And then we'll top with a little bit of our beef. I am gonna give this, it's not the best thing I've ever made, that's for sure. Uh, so we're gonna give it a 6.8 out of 10. We used a bunch of things out of the refrigerator, which is a 10 out of 10. I'm pretty happy about getting just some of those random bottles that had hardly anything in them out of the refrigerator. This is a 10 out of 10. And then my rice is a 10 out of 10. I mean, I didn't mess the rice up. I could just eat these vegetables for dinner, but the sauce, I've done better. So hopefully the rest of the week we will top this meal. Now this is a 10 out of 10 oatmeal, but Josh really liked this beef meal. I didn't tell him it wasn't my favorite. And so I'm probably just being a little hard on myself. Have to say, I'm pretty glad that I thought about doing a freezer meal for dinner tonight because let me show you what the state of my kitchen is. <laughs> There are a ton of goodies. There's homemade marshmallows, Chex Mix with M&Ms and white chocolate on the table. And then on my freeze dryer table, there's coconut macaroons, hazelnut macaroons. And yeah, it's just a lot. We have here peanut butter. We're making homemade Reese's peanut butters, um, brownie marshmallow fluff, truffles. And it's already almost eight o'clock. I didn't realize how late it was. Josh has been home for a little bit, but for some reason, time just escaped me. So he said he was gonna come downstairs and help me with the dishes, which I greatly appreciate. I'm gonna put the freezer meal in the lower oven. I'm still making cookies in the upper oven, and I'll show you what that looks like when it comes out. I did not cook a vegetable side with this because if you watch this freezer cooking video, I put so much zucchini in here, I'm not worried about needing to make a vegetable side. Hey friends, it is Friday night and we're gonna have a good time in the kitchen. I had another fail kind of <laughs> flop recipe and I'll get to that in just a second. But what we're gonna be doing tonight is we've got to take care of all of these potatoes. They are about to crawl out of the box. These are the potatoes that I grew this year and they have eyes like crazy. They're still good. Some of them are getting a little bit soft, but once we peel them, take all the eyes off, wash them, they'll be just fine. We are gonna make mashed potatoes for dinner tonight with them. And then we're gonna take those leftover mashed potatoes tomorrow and we're gonna make gnocchis with them. So this whole box, because they need to be eaten, is gonna be peeled and mashed tonight. And then we are gonna make, let's see, we're gonna make, I'm gonna butcher this, spetzel, spatzel, kind of. Normally it's traditionally made with pork, I think. But the pork chops that I have in my freezer are a whole pork loin. They weren't cut into chops and I didn't want to thaw the entire pork loin to make this recipe. So we're gonna make it out of chicken. So we're gonna serve that with the mashed potatoes. And then I have a cabbage in my refrigerator. This is a fresh cabbage. This cabbage was in my Azure Hall two Azure Halls ago. So December Azure Hall, right? Yeah, so December Azure Hall. So cabbage can stay fresh in the refrigerator a really long time. We're going on, I think, like seven weeks of this cabbage. Still totally fine. There's no rotten, no soft spots on it at all. And we're gonna make German sweet and sour cabbage. I've never made this before, but I thought it would go well with this dinner. I have my dredging station here. These are some just old breadcrumbs that I had in my freezer. They were some leftover hamburger and hot dog buns, and I blended those up and they've been in my freezer. But I went ahead and I toasted them in the oven for about 15 minutes at about 300 degrees so that they would dry out nicely. All the recipes when I was looking online to make this called for panko breadcrumbs. I don't have panko breadcrumbs, so we're gonna make do with what we have, so I hope this turns out. 
I'm excited to have this dinner tonight because I've never attempted making spatzel. I normally don't pan fry anything, so this is gonna be a little bit new to me. I made another one of the almond flour banana bread recipes because I wanted to use up more of that almond flour and I thought the banana bread recipe was really good. And I used a different recipe than I used last time, but this was not the recipe's fault. This is my fault. I did not follow the directions. The, the recipe called to make two loaves, but last time I made it, the loaf was really short, so I wanted to make a wider loaf this time. So I put the majority of the batter in one loaf pan and then I made six muffins. And the problem is it took forever for the middle to be done. And definitely I need to follow the recipe on this because by the time the center was cooked, the outside is definitely overcooked. I'm just gonna cut this outside part off and we'll still eat the inside part. I tried the inside part and it tasted just fine, but this was Definitely a little bit of a fail. The muffins turned out perfect because I didn't overcook those. I'm gonna start by processing all these potatoes. I need to peel them. Normally I don't peel my potatoes, but these turned a little bit green when I was curing them. So I wanna make sure that I peel any of the green part off so that we have just nice fresh white potato. And I'm gonna peel them and then I'm gonna give them a good wash. I do have a video where I harvested all these potatoes. My potato harvest was a little bit small this year. Last year I grew 130 pounds of potatoes, which was a lot of potatoes for Josh and I. And this year I think I only grew about 45 in more space. It was kind of a potato fail. So this next year we are going to attempt to grow more potatoes. <laughs> Hopefully around the 100 pound mark, but we'll see. I decided to go ahead and clean up my mess. I wanted to try to tidy that up before I got the whole dinner cooked. I washed the potatoes after I peeled them and now I'm cutting them into the pot. We're gonna boil them in. And I'm gonna fill this up with water, get it on the stove and get these potatoes cooking. I'm gonna prepare the chicken. I'm gonna cut it in half first and then we're gonna pound it thin. So we'll have four cutlets. I'm recycling a piece of parchment paper that I used yesterday when I was making the cookies. And now I need to pound these cutlets thin. I'm using a mason jar because I don't have a meat tenderizer. I was thinking as I was doing this, this is probably not the safest thing to use to pound your meat out, but it's what I have, so it's what I'm using. So use caution if you're gonna use a glass jar to pound your cutlets out thinly. I have some butter in this back pan here. In the cabbage, we're going to add a quarter cup, if I can get it open, of apple cider vinegar. And two tablespoons of sugar. And I already salted it. And then we're gonna add black pepper. So I'm gonna mix this up. I'm gonna turn the stove off. I'll give it a taste test in a little bit. We're gonna season our dredge. I'm gonna put seasoned salt in the flour and a little bit of seasoned salt in the breadcrumbs. We're gonna put it in the flour first. I've only done this one other time before. I don't cook like this on a regular basis, you guys see my cooking. But every once in a while, it's kind of fun to try something new and to celebrate a Friday night dinner. Make something a little bit fancier. We're gonna put this in the egg wash. Trying to get it fully coated. Oh, that's our potatoes.
That was the exact amount we needed. I chopped up some garlic for the potatoes. The potatoes were done. They were fork tender, so I strained them out. I put some butter in the pot just to melt it and to cook the garlic a little bit so that we could saute that garlic and it wouldn't be raw going into our potatoes. So I let my potatoes steam to let any of the extra moisture reduce off because if you're making gnocchis, you don't want extra moisture in there. This is called a ricer and it's a way to get really smooth potatoes. I don't normally use this when I make mashed potatoes just to eat mashed potatoes, but if I want gnocchis, I don't want lumps in them. See how smooth they come out? If you like really smooth mashed potatoes, you might like to use a ricer every time. I can link this down below. These potatoes are hot. A few of you have asked about my countertops because you worry that I put hot stuff on them. They are granite, which is a natural stone. And one of the cool things about them is they don't aren't affected by heat. So it's okay that I put hot stuff on them. I'm mixing in that butter and garlic and then I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull out everything except for four servings of mashed potatoes because I made four cutlets of chicken. So Josh and I will have a serving tonight and then there'll be one leftovers and then the rest of these are gonna be made into gnocchi. But I wanna get that garlic and butter mixed in there. So that's evenly incorporated. All right, we're about to fry these, so I'm putting on another apron just so I don't splatter up here so much. And then I put avocado oil in here, probably a quarter of a cup. I think we're getting close to temperature. I think I'm gonna use my new candy thermometer spatula to see what temperature we're at. I've never really deep fried before, so this is kind of pan frying, it's not technically deep frying. And we're only at 207 degrees, so I'm assuming we probably want it at about 350, right? You tell me. Yeah, 208, so we have, I just turned the heat up, so we have a little bit to go. I'm a little nervous. Okay, what I have in the oven too, let me show you, I have, Another cookie sheet with some foil and a, what is this called, drying rack. So when I take them out, because I'm only gonna be able to do probably one at a time, I'll put them on here so they can stay warm in the oven. And I want them on this drying rack so they're not sitting on the foil. That way any grease can drip and they don't get soggy on the bottom from condensation. Let's taste our mashed potatoes since we're waiting for this and our cabbage. Those are fantastic. They are missing Parmesan cheese. I normally put Parmesan cheese in my mashed potatoes, but I'm out, so we're not gonna put any in there. We'll taste the cabbage. That's really good. I wouldn't put any more sugar in it. It has two tablespoons and that seems perfect. I do think I'm gonna add a splash more vinegar though. And then off camera, so we're at 240 degrees now. I did add a little bit more salt and pepper to this earlier. So I'm just gonna do a splash. If I put too much, Josh probably won't like it. Mm. Mm hmm. I just needed that little bit more of a zing. Okay, we're at 305, 307. I'm gonna turn the temperature down just a little bit. This is my new candy thermometer spatula. It was a gift and I am, have used it three times this week already. I love it. When you're thinking through meals like this where there's multiple components and they all you want them hot at the same time, you wanna think of getting the stuff done first that's gonna take the longest. Something like this isn't gonna take very long so we're gonna do it really quickly. I have both of my cabbage and my potatoes on low just staying warm on the stove. We're also gonna make a caper sauce I haven't mentioned that yet. 
I really liked last two weeks ago, I think, where we made that chicken piccata and we had capers and cream. I'm not going to use cream in this sauce, but I'm going to make like a lemon. I'm going to use lemon juice and we're going to make like a quick pan sauce to go on top. So it's definitely warm. It's at 380. So I'm a little nervous. Here's the moment of truth. I think we can fit two in there. I am patting them a little bit just to get any excess grease off. And then we're going to stick these back. Whoa! We're going to stick these in the oven. So I am dabbing them on a paper towel. This is the last one. I have a jar here. I'm gonna strain this avocado oil so that I can use it again. I'm gonna have to research that, but I think you can reuse oil when you pan fry like this as long as you strain it, maybe. This cast iron is a Finex cast iron. This was a Christmas gift from Josh to me, and it is a beautiful cast iron. One of the cool features of it is that it's octagonal shape on the outside, not the bottom, and so it makes pouring really easy. I can link it down below if you're interested in checking it out. I just had a thought. That was probably super dangerous, pouring really hot grease into a glass jar. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna wipe this out and we're gonna make the pan sauce. All of my really nice cookware have been gifts from Josh or from family members. Josh used to feel guilty about buying cookware for me. He thought that it was more of a gift for himself because I cook for him and I said, nope, I love high quality cookware and I love it as a gift. So you know your sauce is ready for the butter when you run your spoon along it and there's a trail left behind. I turn the stove off, now we can whisk in the butter. We want to whisk in cold butter. I'm going to take this off the stove. I think the proper term for this is called mounting in the butter and you only want to do one piece at a time. And you're going to whisk that in and this is going to emulsify. If you try to do too many at one time then it's going to break. You can do this technique with almost anything. It's really good. I have a video where we cook a steak together and I show you how to do this with a steak and we make a mushroom pan sauce. I can link that down below. Okay, there's our sauce. So Josh is downstairs now and I'm gonna plate everything. You can see how it's gonna come together. So we're gonna have extra potatoes that I made tonight and those will just get folded into the gnocchi tomorrow. Look how beautiful it turned out. So we're gonna give it a taste test. This is not something I typically make. Never made this before. So. Well, it looks incredible. Oh, good. Looks it smells like it, good. Did it take a lot of effort? No, not really. It seems very intricate. I mean, there were steps that you had to take that, you know, but it wasn't hard necessarily. It was kind of just waiting. So I like to eat a little bit of everything, mashed potato, cabbage, and the sauce together. I mean, anytime there's capers involved, I assume it's very fancy. Mmm. <laughs> That's really good. I'm not a big, like, breaded chicken kind of guy. Oh, really? Like, 
fried chicken and stuff I'm not really into, but this is really good. Can you hear the crunch on that? I can hear your mouth crunching from here, so. Yeah. Wow. This is really good. Do you try, try the cabbage by itself. Really tasty. So it's... All of it together is great. Hey friends, it is Sunday and we are getting ready to make the gnocchi. It's normally I end the vlog Sunday morning, but because I keep promising that we're going to do these gnocchis, we're going to finish through Sunday today and we are going to show you how I'm going to make the gnocchis. I'm going to make a lot of gnocchis. I have this whole bowl here, plus these are the mashed potatoes that I made that we didn't go through when we had our chicken the other night. And I'm going to show you how you can freeze gnocchis. So you only have to do this one time because it can be a little bit of a labor intensive process. It's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time and does make a little bit of a mess. So if you're going to do it, you might as well go big and just get a bunch done so you have some prepped. In here, I added a little bit of bacon grease and a package of onions from the garden. I don't have bacon that we cooked up a couple weeks ago in the freezer just a little bit and I don't feel like cooking more bacon we're gonna add that little bit at the end because we're gonna make potato gnocchi soup I've never made this before but I kind of have a vague idea of how we're gonna do it and I want more of that bacon flavor and so instead of making more bacon today I just decided to cook the onions in bacon grease always save your bacon grease so let's go ahead and get the gnocchis made up so we can make some dinner tonight and we can prep a bunch of gnocchis for future dinners all gnocchis are are a potato dumpling pasta we're gonna put all these potatoes on our counter I did wash the counter before we got started and I'm gonna mix in our mashed potatoes we're gonna mix that in just a little bit so it's a little bit evenly mixed and I'm gonna make a well push that up I'm excited to do this because these are those potatoes from the garden that were looking like, you know, they were about to go bad if we didn't get to them. So this is a perfect use for them. I only have four eggs inside, so I need to go run and collect eggs because we're gonna need more than four eggs to make these dumplings. I just got some more eggs and washed them up. These are fresh, so I don't need to crack them into another container, but now it's habit, so I'm going to. A few of you have asked why I feed my eggshells back to my chickens, and it's because an eggshell is almost 100% calcium. And if you don't feed your birds enough calcium, then their little bodies get calcium deficient. And if you don't feed them back their eggshells, which is what they would do in the wild, they would eat the eggshells, then you have to find another source of calcium. So a lot of times that would be oyster shells and I have to buy oyster shells and I don't have to buy the eggshells. So I just give them their eggshells back. I'm gonna put two, four, six, eight, I'm gonna put 10 eggs in here because this is a lot of gnocchi. So it's another great way to use up eggs since Josh and I can't go through all of our eggs with 11 birds. I'm gonna season this because I did not season those potatoes yesterday or two days ago we made them. And then we're going to mix that up. I do this all by feel. I took a class with a friend a long time ago how to make gnocchis. And she taught us in the class how to do it by feel. And in the class she taught us to use leftover mashed potatoes, so that's what I always do. I hardly ever make potatoes just to make gnocchis. I always make mashed potatoes first. So now that we have our egg in there, I'm going to start incorporating flour. The goal is to use as little flour as possible so that you can have a pillowy gnocchi. The more flour you use, the tougher the final gnocchi will be. I did end up using about six to seven cups of flour, but remember I have a ton of potato mixture here. I do this all by feel, like I said, but I will link a written recipe down in the description box. So if you want to try to make this, there will be a recipe down there for you. I use the bench scraper to mix in the majority of the eggs and flour because my goal is to try to reduce how much gluten formation I'm forming. Gluten is going to create a tougher gnocchi. And so I use this to mix it in and then I can kind of get a sense of how much flour I need to continue to add. Once I have a pretty you know, good looking dough, then what I do is I will knead it a little bit. I'm not trying to knead it like I would bread dough. I mean, I'm doing the same motion, 
but I'm just kneading it enough until I have a nice solid amount of dough. And then I form those into two shapes, two logs basically, and I'm gonna cut those logs eventually into just a smaller, more manageable size because even though I'm not trying to form gluten, I am forming gluten, and so it can make it a little bit tough to roll out into the final snakes that we need to. So I work in smaller amounts, and I just start to roll out more manageable size logs, and I'm gonna roll it, all of them out, so I have, I don't know what I have, probably eight you know, medium sized logs to work with. And then when I go to roll them out in my final shape snake that I want, I take the ones that I started with so that that gave just a little bit of time for that gluten to relax. And then I'm going to go ahead and roll them out into my final size snakes I want to form my gnocchis. I hope that this helps. I hope that you aren't intimidated by this process. There's something super empowering about learning how to make your own gnocchis. And these were probably some of the best I've ever made. So we have quite a few rolled out. This is about the size I like them. I prefer to err on the side of smaller gnocchis than larger gnocchis, so I roll them a lot thinner than I would think I need to roll them. And then once I have about this many, what I do is I sprinkle a little bit of flour on top. I like the flour on it so that I can then kind of go like this and coat those ends that I just cut because they're going to be a little bit sticky and that way they don't stick together. Traditionally you take a piece of wood that's got these slats in it and you take your gnocchis and roll them along that. And it, let me show you. And you get these little ridges in it. I don't usually worry about that. I just have little dumpling potato gnocchis like this. And I stick them on a cookie sheet. They're well floured, so they're not gonna stick together. I'm gonna keep rolling these out. Once this tray is filled, I'm gonna stick this in the freezer and we're gonna freeze them raw. While I'm still rolling out gnocchis, I'm gonna keep going on the soup. I caramelize these onions down quite a bit and I'm going to use that wine to deglaze the pan, get up any brown bits from these caramelized onions. And then I have freeze-dried broth here. This is turkey broth that I'm going to add to this. And then I have some kale from the garden from last year. I added some turkey that I had pre-cooked in my freezer into here and the kale is cooked down so it's nice and tender. We're going to add our pre-cooked bacon that we cooked I think two weeks ago now and it's just been in the freezer and we need to add our gnocchi and we're going to cook that in here and then I'm going to top with some cream and some peas. We got three full trays of gnocchi. I'm going to flash freeze them. As soon as they're completely frozen solid I'm going to put them in probably a vacuum sealer in individual portions. So out of three trays, we probably have enough for, at least 10, eight to 10 dinners with gnocchis. And as we keep cooking with them, I will show you different ways to prepare them. This is the first time I've ever cooking them in a soup. I've never made potato gnocchi soup. I've eaten it many times. And I think this is gonna be really, really good. So I want to add some peas. I need to get these in the freezer and I want to add some peas in here and cook those for a minute before we put the gnocchis in. These are peas from the garden that I grew and shelled. I'm not going to grow shelling peas. I didn't realize, this is how new to gardening I am, that there's a difference between shelling peas and sweet peas. <laughs> this is probably, I haven't even used any of them because it took me so long. I think it took me probably four or five hours to shell this amount of peas. It's just not worth it because you get so little for how much space it takes. 
and I can buy organic peas at the grocery store for so cheap. I haven't even wanted to use them because they, they're so precious to me. I'm going to add our bacon. I think I'm going to add at least, let's see, we'll start with one cup. I did blanch these before I froze them. I think I'm going to add two cups. This is going to add some sweetness. I'm going to have that come back up to a boil. I'm going to add some cream. This is going to add sweetness as well. I realized I forgot to saute garlic, but it's too late now and I'm not going to worry about it. One thing that's pretty cool about the soup is it's homemade bone broth. The kale, the peas, the potatoes are all, oh, and the onions are all from my garden. And if I had remembered to put garlic in here when I sauteed it, that would have been from my garden as well. So that's definitely quite an accomplishment. Gnocchis do expand a little bit. That's why I prefer to err on the side of smaller gnocchis than larger ones. I used to make them way too big. smells so good. It smells like a hog in a bowl. Probably it's the turkey because it's turkey broth and turkey meat. I think having cooked meat in the freezer is really, really crucial in pulling together a really quick meal. And just think if I also had these gnocchis in the freezer instead of having to make them today, like now I have a ton of gnocchis in the freezer, how fast this meal would have come together and it would have all been homemade because I had prepped ingredients already on hand. The bacon, the turkey, the broth. Okay. This is a hug in a bowl, like I said. This is so comforting and delicious. The cream is just a perfect touch. Oh yes, I put a lot of pepper in here. I think caramelizing your onions always makes a big difference in maximizing the layer of flavor when you're making any dish. You'll notice that when I cook, I love to really caramelize those onions because I think that way you're getting the maximum flavor. This is so good. This is so good. I don't make soup very often because it's not Josh's favorite thing to eat for leftovers. And so it's kind of a special treat when I make soup. I have my soup turned off. I told Josh that dinner's ready and he can come down whenever he'd like. He's working on my website for me right now, which is so awesome. I hope that you've been inspired to maybe try something new in the kitchen. I experiment in the kitchen and you know what? Sometimes it doesn't turn out, but sometimes it does and the result is fantastic. And what's the worst thing you're gonna do? You're gonna make a meal that's not a winner and I do that all the time, as you saw this week. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you for coming along with me during Pantry Challenge Week 4. I cannot believe we are already in Week 4. I hope this kind of inspired you to maybe try something new. Push your culinary skills a little bit. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're not going to get a 10 out of 10 meal. It happens. And then when you do hit it out of the ballpark, you are that much more excited and proud of yourself that you tried something and that it tastes fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, I'm going to put a couple other videos here. You can go watch those videos in the meantime between now and my next one comes out. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and I can't wait to see you next time. Thanks guys.